Hi, I'm Sissy, and I'm an art teacher. I use art not only to create children's stories and personal projects, but also use art to heal and release emotional traumas and stress. I want to teach you how anyone can and should create art at any age. So follow me as I teach you art techniques for your creative expression, but also for your internal well-being. In last episode, we went over graphite pencils and how to create a monochrome illustration of a bird using a color image reference. Now, in this episode, we will be creating moths with gouache and inks. So now, let's start the episode. Record. Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video, I am using inks, gouache, and colored pencils to create this lovely illustration. If you would like to join me, grab all your supplies, hit pause, and let's get down to business. Okay, so as usual, if you would like to see the full process video where I explained step-by-step step in very minute detail, then head on over to my Patreon where you can see a collection of all my art workshops right there. And there's only one tier, which is a five euro tier. But anyways, I don't want to bug you with that stuff. And the reason for it is because I'm getting ready and getting kind of in the mood of using inks and thinking about black line art, which I used to do a lot, for Inktober. Because it's starting next month and I love Inktober. But I'm not going to pressure myself or anything. I'm just going to take it easy and see what happens. I might do a story idea as I did last year, which you can see here. Uh, with France, my character, which is a little frog, and he was doing all these really cool and neat Halloween activities. This year, I'm not so sure if I'm going to be creating a story or just doing random illustrations depending on the prompt of that day. We'll see. But so, let's head on over to this video, and I hope you enjoy it. But first, let's do a bit of ASMR.
All right, now that we did a bit of relaxing ASMR, I am using my Royal Talons A4 sketchbook. It has a creamy colored page paper. Um, and I'm using my Derwent Inktense colored pencil. I love these to sketch. They have this nice texture and grip that they have on the paper. So it's a real joy to draw. It already is an experience to draw with these pencils, which I rather enjoy. To tell you the truth, when I started this sketch, I wasn't quite sure what to do. And my go-to are usually insects or faces when I just don't know what to draw. And so I thought, let's just draw some moths I picked some reference pictures, but it wasn't anything that I was trying to be a realistic portrayal of moss. I just wanted to play around and choose colors and try different things, you know, just have fun in my sketchbook. Uh, this was just going to be for me just to get more into the groove of using inks again because for a while I've only been using gouache and pastels. So since inks work a bit differently, I just thought, you yeah, know, let's just have some fun. I did draw the wing a bit out of this moth, um, but I didn't paint that part because I didn't want to ruin the other side, which I have another illustration of the desert scene that I really enjoy. And with this paper from Royal Talons, I've noticed that inks do run off into the next page. So I was very, very careful. All right, now for the background. I wanted to use green. Lately, I've been very in love with different tonalities of green. I think I've said this before in other videos. It's just that there are so many beautiful variations of green that you can get when you combine other colors. You can add yellow to green and it gives you this nice, fresh, citrusy, may green. You can add blue and you get more of a turquoise green. You can add black and adding black to green is beautiful. You get this nice dark green. You can add um, burnt sienna or okra and then you get these neutral greens. They're absolutely beautiful. So I love green here. I am using my Cynidia ink brushes. I just pour some out on a palette and then with my Caran d'Ache, sorry, Caran d'Ache um, water brush, I am able to, you know, decide what type of intensity of ink I want and if I wanted to mix it with other colors then I could do so. This is purely for inks right here, this, this plasticky tablet that you see on the right hand side. I have another one that is only for watercolors and another one for gouache and I don't mix them. I like to have things separate and I know which one is for which. This one's a quite large one and has a lot of bigger compartments where I like to mix my colors because I tend to buy a limited amount of colors and then just go from there. So I'll get the primaries and then I might get a couple of different green tonalities and pink. I like to have pink um, and then, yeah, and then I play. And now for the fun part, I you can see here that I'm mixing a pink with a blue. I believe that is the ultramarine blue that I'm mixing the pink with and it gives this beautiful muted purple. I love muted colors. I mean, I like to do contrast between muted and very vibrant colors. What it, it used to be that I would use always vibrant colors, but now I'm enjoying the muted ones. 
The thing with inks that you really need to pay attention to is that they dry very quickly and they will leave blotchiness and marks. If you don't want blotchiness and marks, which I actually enjoy, I, I think it looked cool in the background to have those blotches. I like it because it gives it a sense of movement and texture and, and I don't like perfection. However, not everyone likes them and that's perfectly all right. There are times where I don't want them present, especially if I'm doing like a face. I don't want to blotch right down the middle of the cheek. It'll look, it'll look horrible for me in that instance. So if you're like that and you don't want this blotchiness, what you do is you first wet the area where you want to place the ink. And then when it's, when it's still a bit moist, not drenched in water, just, just still wet to the touch that is when you will apply your color of inks and you get to see how it just spreads like wild fires it's just so magnificent and beautiful to watch how just inks will just rapidly spread they spread even faster than watercolors do So now that I've created a base color for all of my moths, I really don't care that they're messy and blotchy and that the colors spilled over. None of that matters to me. I just wanted to be loose and have fun with inks and just, you know, kind of remember how they interact with the paper. Now I am grabbing my pit pens and I'm grabbing my Pentel brush and colored pencils and I'm just going to play around and see what details do I want to add to them, if I want to outline them, if I want to add little marks or little, you know, circles or dots or lines or just, you know, small details. This is the time to have fun and play around. Don't take it so seriously. Who cares if it doesn't work out? You can always start again but have fun and that's what i did i went with my usual little marks because i love how little marks little lines look so with one i did little marks with other ones i did dots with other ones i did shapes with other ones i did little veins it's a lot of fun So after doing all the details to the moths, I decided that I wanted to have a pattern to the background. I grabbed my gouache, I mixed up a darker tonality but similar tonality of green for the background. I drew some little leaves and I started to paint around them. See with gouache, since it is designer gouache, it is water soluble, you can reactivate it so you don't leave this blotchiness which I knew that the ink would and that's why I decided to choose gouache because I liked the idea of having that texture for the little leaves so you could see a little bit of these blotchiness if I were to encircle those lines but I want it to be more of a flat background with the exception of these leaves and so I just 
you know, take my time and start to go around the little shapes of the leaves that I left. And it was quite a meditative and relaxing endeavor. I enjoyed it. I mean, you would think that it would be like, oh my God, it's so repetitive and boring. But in reality, I really enjoyed it. And I think I will probably be incorporating this type of, of pattern background to other illustrations that I create. We'll see, but you should give it a try. Just to finish it up, I want to add a bit of shading just below the lower part of the wings of the moth and to the left side, as if, so that that way they can come up off of the background and it doesn't seem so flat and two-dimensional. I grab some blue because that tends to be my preference. I don't like black shadows. I like blue shadows or even purple. And so I just grab some gouache and I go around the wings just a little bit to give it that 3D feel. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know down below what you would like to see me draw next, but I know that the next video is going to be all about dragons because I mean, come on, who doesn't love dragons? I do. So either way, see you next time guys. And don't forget all my content that is not seen here on YouTube is over on my Patreon. Bye guys. Bye.